So before we get into today's video, perhaps I should explain what's been going on. This has taken a while. You can thank Curious Cucumber over on DeviantArt for this. She did the other room that I usually use. It is glorious, and a bit more personal to me, in the sense that the majority of the things in this room I own. The sonic screwdriver, the mug, okay, I broke that. The guitars, both of which I do own. A snowball microphone. Even that plushie between the two monitors given to me by a very beautiful, lovely lady. I'm still working on trying to get a custom Benny ball made, but that's a future project. The second thing I want to address quickly. Tonight, over on my gaming channel, I'm going back to Alpha 16 on 7 Days to Die for a... Is it 4th or 5th one off? I think it's 4th, because I'm actually enjoying it a little. So if you want to watch me go and dig for 3 hours, join me there tonight. Now the subject of today's video is the uber ad friendly discussion, debate, and obvious arguments over whether or not a trans athlete should compete in the sport for the gender they now belong to, or sex, although it's not really a biological sex discussion we'll get to later. Many say, sure, have at it, but four sporting legends, mostly British, have come out against trans athletes competing in the sport they choose to for the gender they now identify with, and they've all received a certain level of backlash. In this, we have Dame Kelly Holmes, Paula Radcliffe, Sharon Davis, and Martina Navratilova. These four people have spoken out against it, and understandably so. We know there are huge advantages trans women hold over biological women in certain sports. Let's take MMA, for example, where Ronda Rousey herself even said she would not fight Fallon Fox, I believe. I'm not going to play the clip from TMZ because they'll just strike the video down, but I will link Ronda Rousey's little discussion on it in the description below. The point is, Fallon Fox held a huge biological advantage over her female opponents, the point where it basically was domestic abuse. While Fallon Fox may have, as a man, not been as good, in a woman's sport, Fallon Fox was indestructible, and I don't think that is right in the slightest. I'll come up with a solution nearer the end of the video. There are other instances where there have been mediocre netball players transitioning and becoming the best netball players, which I, I don't care for netball, but you get the point. You've got trans women competing in weightlifting, destroying the world records, and that's because when they were men, they held a huge advantage over the woman, and they continued to hold that advantage post-transition or while they are transitioning. Because let's face it, there are biological differences between men and women. Men, as we all know, hold a very obvious muscle density advantage over women. So trans women would still retain that same advantage if looked after correctly. Therefore, they should not be allowed to compete in the women's events. It's not just the earlier mentioned sports. There are many more where this has cropped up. And it is getting to the point where others are starting to sound like TERFs. When they're not, they're pointing out an obvious discrepancy. Again, I'll get to my solution at the end. So the first person we're going to address is Dame Kelly Holmes. Dame Kelly Holmes, for those who don't know, is a double Olympic gold winner, who said that trans athletes have an unfair advantage. Now, in a Twitter row, she called out trans cyclist Rachel McKinnon, who then asked sponsors Specialized and Garmin to drop her. Well, that's nice. You can't win an argument, so you go after the person's income instead. Now, for the sake of a little more clarity, she was in context, originally, defending Sharon Davis, who had said, those with a male sex advantage should not be able to compete in women's sport, and she is quite right. This is not about equality or trans rights. This is about an obvious advantage over feelings. You are not being discriminated against, because you have an obvious advantage over everyone else. And unfortunately, you're in one of those positions where there is only one real solution that could actually benefit you. Although at the same time, it won't make you remotely special. Again, at the end. To go to Sharon Davis, there is a video on the BBC linked below, I'm not going to play it, where she said that allowing trans athletes to compete in female competitions would actually threaten the progress of women's sports. And it is actually the case because this doesn't work the other way around as well as you might think. Maybe in gymnastics, but it doesn't really work for trans men. 
in the sense that they can't compete in running, realistically, weightlifting football, as they could with other men without being utterly mediocre, no offence intended, but after watching an exhibition match between Andy Murray and Serena Williams, there is an obvious difference. For God's sake, his serve was all that was needed to beat her, and she's supposedly the best female tennis player in the world, and a massive cheat, and a pouty, pouty bitch. But the point stands. There are obvious differences, and I've said it so many times already, that one must accept it does harm women's sports if someone who was once a man is the one that's still holding those advantages of being a man, because they do for a while, is then destroying those records that become totally unattainable. It is not a turf argument, although I... No, it, it, it is. Turfs use this kind of argumentation as well. But as I'm not a turf, nor is Sharon Davis, Paula Radcliffe, Martina Navratilova, or Dame Kelly Holmes, one can safely say this is said from a position of experience. There is no way Dame Kelly Holmes would have won either of her gold medals against a trans woman who had been training in that event as well. No offence, but the world records for the event she did and the men's, I think a mediocre male equivalent would still beat her. No offence here. To move on to the next person in the list, we have Paula Radcliffe, who has said that tighter transgender rules are needed to avoid manipulation. Now, Paula Radcliffe is a world record marathon holder. Now, she has been quoted as saying, absolutely any transgender men or women should be able to access sport. It just depends which category. We need to protect female sport, but we also need to protect transgender women and their rights. For this to advance fairly for everybody, we have to accept it might take a while, work together, and stop attacking the other side. Very calm way of approaching it. Maybe I should get to my solution now. Let's do that. Here's the solution, everyone. Right? Biological men event, biological women event. Trans men event, trans women event. We have the Paralympics, so why can't we have the Trans Olympics? If it's that important, there you go, you get your event, and if you work hard at it, you can then start to build, well, maybe a Trans Premier League. You never know, it might actually catch on in 50 to 100 years. One cannot simply promote it. It must stand on its own merit. And that way, everyone is treated equally. It's not a case of being discriminated against, it's accepting biological differences, regardless of gender. Now to move on to the last person involved in all this, Martina Navratilova, one of the most successful women's tennis players in history. I think she might actually have the highest number of Grand Slam wins. I know she's a member of the LGBT community. She first drew criticism from equalities activists and trans athletes when she tweeted in December, you can't just proclaim yourself a female and be able to compete against women. There must be some standards, and having a penis and competing as a woman would not fit that standard. Now, it is important to address that there is actually some rules on this, where the International Olympic Committee guidelines state that transgender women must suppress testosterone levels for at least 12 months before competition. That doesn't really apply to tennis, but it is nice to know that our governing bodies that are actively looking for ways to try and make it fairer, although reducing testosterone doesn't entirely fix the problem, but it is one solution. It's not as good as my idea, the Trans Premier League, come on. Now, writing in the Sunday Times, she has said that she subsequently promised to keep quiet on the subject until she had done some research, and then she was quoted as saying, to put the argument at its most basic, a man can decide to be female, take hormones if required by whatever sporting organisation is concerned, win everything in sight, and perhaps earn a small fortune, and then reverse his decision and go back to making babies if he so desires. It's insane and it's cheating. I am happy to address the transgender women in whatever form she prefers, but I would not be happy to compete against her. It would not be fair. In this context, fair is quite obvious. Not so sure about the whole changing mind part in the first paragraph, but I think we all get the point. Now, she has since apologised for this. She has been made to apologise because the abuse was pretty severe, and I'm not going to show the messages of it. Quite frankly, it's remarkable how intolerant some people are, Acting on feelings alone, apparently, is enough. Now, previous rules, which were approved in 2003, required transgender athletes to have reassignment surgery, followed by at least two years of hormone therapy, in order to be eligible to compete, which shows you just how far this has changed, because simply reducing the hormone levels does not solve the problem. 
as a man builds up muscle and bone density, as well as a greater number of oxygen-carrying red blood cells from childhood. Men have an advantage for a reason. We are the hunter, remember? Okay, I'm not. If I'm hungry, I just go to Sainsbury's. One of the major problems with this, and one of the reasons I take issue with groups calling out these athletes, or former athletes, is that their arguments usually centre around how sport should be welcoming to everyone. You're quite right, they should be. However, what is the purpose of a sport? To entertain someone for being different, or to win? To win is the answer. Now, if others notice there is an obvious difference between the fellow athletes, then they're going to address it, call it out, and complain. Trans athletes, trans women that is especially, hold an advantage over regular women. Okay? This is not an argument about being inclusive, it's about giving people a fair chance to compete. If cheating were allowed, then we wouldn't need a starting gun and that camera stuff on a race line, would we? Although I still really want to see an entire lineup of 100 meter sprinters do it on every steroid available. Any enhancing drug, let them take it. I want to see if any of them can break into the speed force. I think we're done here. If I don't see you tonight over on Omegon Plays, I hope you'll have a lovely Tuesday, and thank you all for listening.